Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do some upgrades to my fat bike and I touched upon it in a previous video. Uh, primarily I'm just going to update it to a 1x10 drivetrain. Right now it's 2x10 and the rear cassette doesn't quite have the range that I need for uh, going 1x10 um, in the snow. So I got a new cassette, got a new front uh, chain ring, gonna get rid of this rusty front derailleur, strip it all out, and that's what I'm gonna do in this video. And then in another video, I'll do the dropper post install. I did a dropper post install on my low side and showed it on video. But um, here, I'm gonna have to cut a hole in the frame and do a dropper post install. Uh, very similar to that one, except for the cutting the hole in the frame part. So let's go ahead and get this uh, one by 10 uh, update out of the way. And we're gonna start by cleaning this bad boy up because this bike is dirty. And I'm pretty sure you don't wanna be here on YouTube watching me clean all this gunk off my bike so let's go ahead and uh skip that part and get right to doing the drivetrain First things first, let's just get this all apart. I always forget to go into the lowest gear, except this time I didn't. So go into the lowest gear before you take off your wheel, you'll have an easier time getting it off. This is an older bike. It actually has a quick release, but it is a 190 rear end. And it, yeah, boy, does it ever have a quick release. <laughs> and so um, just pop that off the old traditional quick release way pull that railer out of the way get it in there all right so what i'm hoping here and this is uh <laughs> gonna be questionable this is kind of a uh, medium uh length derailleur and so i'm hoping this is enough range it should be to go one by ten with that big 40 six tooth i'm believing it will be because if it can go to this big ring and the big in the back or whatever it should have the range um and i guess i'll find out um it's kind of funny this is even carbon x9 is actually pretty high end for the ceram line and then xo of course is like the top of the line stuff but now they kind of have a different system i believe with like the gx and the nx and all that stuff but um <clears throat> i like the x9 so i'm gonna keep it um so i got the wheel off next thing will be to take the crank off all right now that i actually figured out how to take this crank arm off <laughs> let's start doing it so basically the <clears throat> loosening of this is what pulls the arm off and it's an eight millimeter and then there's a cover that's 10 millimeter so it can be deceiving so at first i grab the 10 millimeter wrench and remove the cover not realizing that <laughs> i need to leave the cover on i'll show you that if you can see it in the light so this is just the cover and then the 
10 millimeter for the cover and this is actually reverse threaded and then inside is the actual uh, bolt that goes into the spindle it uses an eight millimeter so it can fit within that hole and then as you loosen it that bolt pushes against the cover and literally extracts the crank arm off it's a pretty slick system but you have to like know that that is what the system is <laughs> and of course i didn't when i first tried it but now i realize it is. i might have to get the rubber mallet out for this i hate putting things on that tray because when I bang on things, it all falls off. There we go. Let's get the chain to stop. Whoops. Get the chain to stop being kink. <clears throat> what happens with this particular bike stand, it's not necessarily the best bike stand, is now that all the weight is off the back of my bike and there's weight on the front, the stand wants to fall backwards <laughs> so I have to be careful so now I have the crank off so I can remove the small ring which I won't be using anymore and I can put my new wolf tooth on here and be all set so this is actually a 36 I'm gonna go down to a 32 so my hardest gear will be 3211 and my easiest gear will be 3246 and then a bunch in between so that should be good so let's go ahead and get this chain ring off of here <laughs> all right we'll put these aside because i'll need those to put the cranks back on here's the package from wolf tooth Let's go ahead and uh, take a peek at this. Oh, I think I need to sharpen my knife. Jesus, I can't even rip through this. All right. So, I mean, it is wolf tooth, which they make really nice, high quality stuff. But um, I don't know <laughs> if we're going to ooh and ah over a chain ring. But we do know that this is going to be nice quality construction it is a single speed chain ring so it will be um the chain should stay on there a lot nicer so uh let's go ahead and uh throw this bad boy on you can see how uh <laughs> rusty and corroded things get being riding in these minnesota winters so i'm going to go ahead and remove both of these chain rings and i'm pretty sure you're not going to want to watch the process of that one of the things i will mention is when you install parts you want to put some grease on the threads because had i not put grease on these threads when i installed these i would not be able to get them off today with all this uh crap on them um, with the grease on there, once I break them loose, I can just pull them off with my fingers. So always grease the threads before you uh, put things together and you'll thank yourself later when it comes to taking this stuff apart. That's off now to get the big chain ring off. All right. <laughs> I guy doesn't want to come out of there. Come out of there, please. There it goes. So, got the chain ring off. So I just have the spider. Probably want to take the wolf tooth and just double check and make sure I ordered the right size. Looks good. Looks like the perfect size. It does seem like it has a little bit of lined up with the holes but it's kind of a little bit of slop in there so that's kind of weird because that means that the bolts are going to have to be what holds this and <clears throat> not against here but yeah we'll just have to run it and see but um it is the right size chain ring so um maybe this specialized crank or i guess it's a samox whatever came on the specialized isn't as precision as say a shimano or something like that um so let's go ahead and clean this off and move on to the next step
as soon as I can find my rag. <laughs> okay, there you go. The new chain ring is on. That's pretty easy. Uh, I like to set my logos up. Um, so here we got the, the brand. Um, now we can read the size really easily. I could have put Wolf Tooth here, but then we got Made in USA over there. So I kind of liked setting it up like this. So it can be uh, kind of cool. Um, Let's go ahead and throw this back together. Before I get too excited about putting the crank set back in, uh, I need to take this front derailleur off because I'm not going to use it anymore. I can take the chain off and that'll give me an opportunity to kind of clean this whole area up because it's pretty dirty in here. And it's best to take advantage of cleaning things while you have the parts off the bike. It's a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all this. Then we'll go ahead and put the crank set back in. Okay, so I got the derailleur off. Um, I'll remove this cable in a bit. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm gonna clean this and wipe it down, but I'm not gonna go crazy because uh, I'm just gonna go out and ride this bike in the slop again. So it just doesn't make sense for me to just make it like totally spotless or polish it or do anything like that. This thing's pretty beat up anyway. I've had it for four or so years. And um, so I'm just going to throw the crank back on there. Um, while I'm at it, I'll check the tightness of the bottom bracket. Um, this is a press fit bottom bracket, but this is an aftermarket. And I forget the brand, but it was suggested to me by a... A uh, guy at a bike shop called Angry Catfish here in Minneapolis and he told me to get this bottom bracket because then you don't have to press it on or off. It's threaded in the middle and the bottom bracket actually <laughs> threads together and presses itself and it also extracts itself. You just need the special tool which I have hanging over there. And I'll just check this, make sure it's tight before I put the crank back in and then we're good to go. That actually was loose, and so I'm glad I tightened it. Um, the tool says wheels manufacturing on it, so I'm wondering if the bottom bracket's a wheels manufacturing bottom bracket. Um, I can try to look that up and see if that's what it is, and then I can link it in the description if I remember to do that. But uh, I love this bottom bracket. I'm glad I checked it because it was a little loose, and now it's nice and tight. Time to throw the crank set back in there. Alright, we'll just snug that down. There it is. Crank set is ready to go. Cleaned up. Um, new chain ring. Make sure this is really tight. You really want make sure your cranks are tight i'm sure there's some kind of magic torque spec on that um you don't want them coming loose that's for sure um plenty of clearance with the frame uh looks like it's pretty well lined up with the center of the back here which is nice because you kind of want it in the center of the cassette for alignment uh it's not super critical with multi-speed but it's it's nice to have it uh be in the middle so when you're going through the gears you're not cross training chaining cross cross training is something so common nowadays i just said it automatically cross training is not what i want to say cross chaining is what i did want to say um yeah and because i only have one ring on the front there really is no such thing anymore all right let's go ahead and move to the back wheel Okay, so I have the cassette, I just took it off. Uh, it's got aluminum carrier, I believe, or maybe that's steel, I don't know. Oh, aluminum, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't feel all that heavy though, so it is what it is. Um, so uh, this plastic piece is new to me. I'm assuming it's on there, so I can just slide this on. Um, how I remove it, I don't know yet, but I'll figure it out as I go. So let's go ahead and throw this on the wheel. So if you don't know what a chain whip is and what it's used for, you're about to find out. Um, I'm going to try to do this on the bench here. Um, I don't normally do this on benches. I normally do it 
um, on the ground. Um, first things first, let's uh, make sure I don't bend my rotor while I'm in it. Make sure this wrench is big enough because I have a bigger wrench if this one isn't. Oh, it is. Okay. So we'll go ahead and put this tool on here. I'm going to put the chain whip on there. So this is going to want to rotate this way as I'm loosening it. So the idea behind the chain whip is it's going to go around and hold this in place while I'm trying to undo this. And it should just come off fairly easy because I don't crank these super, super tight. There's notches in there and those notches uh, hold this in place um, fairly well. So we'll go ahead and take this cassette off. <laughs> wow. It doesn't want to just pop off. That's interesting. Oh, there it goes. Hopefully that's not the whole. It is the whole free hub body. All right. Well, now I got to do some magic here and figure out how to <laughs> get that off and then get the free hub body back on. Oh, okay, good. I didn't, it didn't come all the way off with the prowl, so, or pawls, so uh, I'm in good shape there. <laughs> Always surprising things. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was on there pretty tight. And I'm not, I mean, it's a little corroded, but I'm not quite sure why. But anyway, this is now off. This is back together. I'm just really glad that it didn't come off with the paws because getting them back in there and having to push them in and try to fit this back in is really tough um i believe this is just a press fit piece so that was part of the reason why it was kind of odd but um we're gonna go ahead and take the new cassette and you gotta keep turning it until oh i got lucky that time and found it right away um so now that that went on there let's make sure it's um Oh yeah, that just doesn't want to um, be easy, does it? <laughs> they like very, oh, there we go. So anyway, this part's being a little problematic. Oh my gosh, cat. All right, I guess you want to go up there then. All right, uh, somehow my cat always manages to get in my videos. Maybe she likes the attention. So this all seems to be working the way I think it should. So we'll go ahead and uh, grab the tool wherever it went to. There it is. <laughs> so for tightening, <laughs> it's pretty easy. You just give it a few pops. That's good enough. Make sure this is on there tight. I mean, it's a little wobbly, but I really think that that's the rehab, but. Yeah, that's a little sloppier than I like it to be. I'm gonna take a closer look at this and see what's going on. And then we'll start this video up again. Okay, I found the problem. Uh, I tightened this down as tight as I want it. <clears throat> it's on there and it's not wobbly. I mean, <laughs> the whole axle can come loose, which is I'm just not used to this act type of axle system where it's just all pressed and held together. Um, so you just have to be careful you don't pop anything out because it's not like threaded tight in there. It just kind of holds itself in there. Very interesting. But anyway, I have this on there. Um, I'm pretty excited about this big ring. Um, let's go ahead and throw it on the bike. It's ready to go after those complications. Okay, let's get the back wheel on. <clears throat> Um, I apologize for the lighting in my workshop. I don't have the best lighting in here, especially not for filming. Um, I don't have a chain on here, so I shouldn't. I should just be able to get that out of the way. Um, get the brake to line up. Get this in there. Yep. Um, 
one thing I like to do when I'm dealing with quick release, um, I like to take the bike out of the stand and put it on the ground and then put the wheel in because doing it like this, I might not get it all. Yeah, I can already tell I didn't get it all the way up in there. So what I generally do, take the bike out of the stand, <laughs> put it on the ground. Ah, I just heard it. And then I make sure it goes all the way in. The wheel goes all the way in. You don't really have to deal with that when you're, uh, when you have like a through axle, but when you have a standard quick release like this, it's important to make sure the wheels or the frame is all the way down in the wheel or the wheels all the way in the frame, however you want to look at it. There we go. Now the rear wheel is on. I got all kinds of crap in the way. So, there we go. All I have to do now is put the chain on and maybe do some adjustment with the gears to make them work right, and I should be good to go. Well, the bad news here is that the derailleur is not compatible with this cassette because the derailleur hits the big ring which I was a little worried about that. I thought I would get lucky. And apparently I bought the wrong chain ring because the chain just comes off this chain ring. So this must be designed for shifting and I didn't know it. So <laughs> looks like I have to scrap this project for now, order the right parts, and then um, get back to this one. Well, I have excellent news on the fat bike front. I actually do have the right wolf tooth front chain ring and I didn't think I did uh, but what it was is the quick link wasn't fully snapped in so what was happening is when the link got here it was kicking off the chain ring so once I fixed that it stayed on there. I'm not able to run an 11 to 46 so I got a different one which is an 11 to 40 two I believe yeah and so I can shift all the way up into that big ring no problem plenty of clearance for the derailleur and I can come all the way down into the 11 tooth so I've successfully converted my fat bike to a 1 by 10 with a pretty decent range. I mean, this is going to be 32, 42. That should be uh, easier gear. Um, if this doesn't work out once winter comes and snow, I do have the option um, to switch this over to a SRAM Eagle setup where I'll have 12 speed back here and a new derailleur and shifter. So I have that option if I need it. So, but for now, I want to try this out and do minimal changes everything's ready i just gotta rip the front shifter off um since i gotta do the dropper post and all that i just haven't done that yet because that'll just be um putting the lever over there and stuff for the dropper post but that's it i've converted this to two by ten it works sweet i'm excited about it so the next video you'll see on this bike will be the dropper post install thanks for watching